In the 20 years since her industry debut, India Ari has sold 10 million records and won four Grammys. But behind the scenes of her incredible success, the worthy singer says her experience in the industry was traumatizing. India Ari sharing her truth on Instagram, calling the business, quote, racist, sexist, and deceitful. Going on to say, quote, I'll never heal from all of it because it shaped my life in ways I can't get back. But despite the trauma she endured, India Ari says she's grateful for it all and even thanked everyone who, quote, hurt, used, sued, played, stole from, and betrayed her. Declaring that today she's grown free and her most powerful days are yet to come. Tan fam, please welcome India Ari to our show from her home in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome. I am so happy to have you here. I can't wait to talk about so many things, but I've got to start with this big news um, that you just announced. In addition to that statement you put out on Instagram about the music industry, you have made a big decision. You are pulling your music and your podcast from the streaming platform Spotify. Joni Mitchell and Neil Young have been protesting the platform because of content on the Joe Rogan show related to COVID. You, though, have made the decision to pull your music and your podcast for a different reason, and it is about race. Yes, I decided to pull it, my music and my podcast from Spotify, but it's dual. It's one is the Joe Rogan conversation and for me, his language around race and some of the things I've seen and heard, but also coupled with that, there is the treatment of artists by Spotify. And so artists are underpaid and Joe, Joe Rogan gets paid all this money and it's hard for me to, these days, just sit back and go, oh, well, that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. I made a commitment with myself after reading this book by Martha Beck called The Way of Integrity. She challenges the reader to an integrity cleanse. And it means telling the whole truth all the time and see what it will make of your life. Mm -hmm. And so when this came up, I, I had to do it. And I'm a little bit nervous about it because I know people are going to conflate the conversations and some people are going to judge me and they're going to say it's not my business and, you know, all these things because it is a little bit of a different reason than Joni and Neil. And so I am working to have it pulled down. I'm getting a little bit of pushback um, from one of the labels I was with for a long time, but I'm still, I'm still trying because it's true for me. Have you heard from Spotify since this decision? I saw some text from someone from Spotify, but I couldn't dig into it, but it was just minutes ago. And so I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know what it is, but I was like excited, but I was like, I, I, I don't want to be later than Tamron. So <laughs> I had to rush and get out. Well, you know, thank you for joining us in the midst of this developing story. I know that this is a huge decision for you. What would make you feel comfortable having your music streamed on that platform as it relates to the concerns you have, particularly with language coming from that podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast? You know, I said in my statement that I believe in freedom of speech, and I do. I mean, as much as I think some of the things I've heard him say in these videos is disgusting, he can say it. What would make me comfortable is if they were, if there were voices of integrity and high consciousness amplified as loud as his. Mm. Um, I'm not being technical because I don't know this world very well, but in our communities, the music communities, we all have a great reverence for, say, um, Quest Love, who has a wonderful big podcast, but does he get paid $100 million? Those kind of things, like the equity, even in the podcast world, I'd love to see. But also what would make me comfortable is for artists to get paid more than a fraction of a penny. And so now we're all amplified and not just him. To your point with Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and others, their issue was with guests and content on his show that were deemed COVID disinformation. And because of that, Spotify responded late Sunday saying it will add a content advisory label to any podcast episode that includes a discussion about COVID-19. Um, Rogan, Joe Rogan, in a video on Instagram, he said that he's not trying to promote misinformation or be controversial, saying that he will, quote, do his best to make sure 
um, that he's researched these topics and try harder to get people with differing opinions. Would you like to see a statement more specifically from Joe Rogan as it relates to your concern about race? Personally, yes. I'm curious what all that is. Because, you know, social media does things and they have these spliced together of him saying the N-word all these different times. I don't know the context, but I would love to hear him address it. So having your podcast removed and having your music removed from this streaming platform is the way right now you feel you can find peace with this. My hope is that some of my artist friends would follow and come along with me. Because one of the hashtags I put on my post was, what if we all leave? Because if you take the power from them, the power's taken. And also, streaming doesn't pay artists a lot. Any No platform pays as much as the art is actually worth. But, you know, if you ask the artist, it's worth it's more than gold. But that's how we feel about our art. But some of the other streaming platforms pay better. And so if we all leave Spotify, or enough of us leave, they'll either change it, or people who want to hear you will stream you somewhere else where you can get paid better. Mm. And so... This is all wishful thinking, though, because the truth is I did it because it's true for me and it's what m brought me peace, because I can't not tell the truth. It's the pact I've made with myself. And that pact you have been maintaining, including in the post that you recently put up, criticizing the music industry, coming up while India Ari says she'll never heal from everything she experienced in the music industry. We'll be right back. with Grammy-winning artist India Ari, who went viral a few weeks ago after posting a series of Instagram posts calling out the music industry for being, quote, racist, sexist, and deceitful. When you hit send on that post, what did that feel like for you? I was just speaking my mind that day. I didn't feel like, here we go. I'm about to wind people up. I didn't feel like that at all. I just felt like, these are things I, I want to say. Mm. And so it wasn't that I felt the way when I pushed send. It was how I felt with the response. Yeah. Like, a lot of my girlfriends were like, you're on this website today. You're on this one today. And I was kind of like, this is fun. It's nice to be seen for yourself. Because, you know, when you're a celebrity, you know, your unspoken job description is to make sure everyone likes you. Right. And I'm, I don't have a need. I'm learning that that's not real and it's not possible. And so it just has been fulfilling and kind of fun. Well, I honest. think you, you hit on a note about it because sometimes having respect is more fulfilling than being liked. Um, and I think that's the challenge, especially for women. Um, we fall into that likability trap and we seed um, respect. I know that looking back at this decision to release this, you reference back to the 44th Grammy Awards that year, um, was the first time that you were nominated. You got seven nominations for Acoustic Soul. And we all know the story. You, you went home empty-handed. But looking back at that loss, you thought it was politically motivated. And now you have all of these artists, whether it is um, the questions about Beyonce and others not receiving Grammy accolades that the wide audience believes that they deserve. Um, what is your take at this point on the Grammys and, and its acknowledgement, particularly of artists like you? What we're told in the industry is that the Grammy is, is the night where it's about the music. But really, you know, there are a lot of other award shows that are about chart positions and who's popular, and it's fine, because they don't say they're about the music, they say they're about the charts. But the Grammys tells us that it's this certain thing, and that it's about the integrity and the music and the music community yeah. voting for its peers. But in the end, there are all these political um, happenings that come into play that make it so that the awards can be skewed. When you're a label executive with a lot of power, you can make sure that all the people on your label get album credits so that they can vote and they can vote for your artist. But also, a lot of it comes down to race, which is kind of how it is in the world in general. And so if you are an artist and the person who backs you is the most powerful white man in the music industry, you're going to have a better chance, period. It doesn't matter what your music is doing or you're going to have a better chance at winning. If, like me, when I came into the music industry, and I have to give a shout-out to the label executive who signed me. His name was Kadar Massenberg. And he was innovative. He was different. He was a young guy. He was in his 30s. 
He gave us Erica Badu and me and D'Angelo. He was innovative. And so this man had these things going on that could compete with the big guys in the rooms. But who's going to win in the end? And so it's not necessarily politically motivated, but it's political. And so if we know that, then we know. Instead of thinking, this is the music industry's night where it's fair and it's about the peers and the peers voting, because it's not just that. This affected so, your mental health. This affected how you saw yourself. And true. you've described it as trauma. Yes. So when I first went to the Grammys, I was 25, 26. And so I'm learning how the world is, how politics work inside of companies through the lens of the music industry. It definitely made me question myself. Where I sit today, I know what matters and what doesn't matter. And the difference in an award and a reward, like I once heard Patti LaBelle say. Yeah. And so I, my career has been very rewarding. Yeah. But the awards have been uh, blocked and all kind of things politicized. But back then, when I was young, it was just like, I don't have a better word than hurtful. I remember getting in bed after the Grammys because Stevie Wonder, who's one of my heroes and mentors, he wanted to go to dinner. And I just could not function. Huh. I was like, I'm going back to the hotel. He was mad. Not mad. He was, like, annoyed that I couldn't just, let's just go, you know. But And also, when that night, he cried, too. Huh. I went to his dressing room, and I was just sitting in there with him, and I just saw a tear roll from under his glasses because he cried for how much I hurt. Like, it hurt. And then I went back to my hotel room, and I just kind of, like, got ready to pull the cover over my head, and he called. Mm. And I was having, like, this little chest pain. I've never, I haven't had a chest pain since. <laughs> but I had, like, this little chest pain when he called and said, you know, it, he said, you are so lovely, and this business is so not. Oh. And it took me years to, first of all, to understand that by losing that big, it made it a story where I was seen. But I'm still in that space of like wanting to clear it up and wanting to not have it stuck in my throat. Because, you know, the pre my publicist and the people who love me said, well, you know, don't say, don't say anything. Because then you might not win next year. But then next year comes and you don't win anyway. So what matters? Right. And so it did affect my mental health, but it also just grew me up like life does. Right.